probability that Ahmed smokes is 3 over 10. The probability that he smokes and develops lung cancer is 4 over 15. Find the probability that Ahmed develops lung cancer given that he smokes. Now the conditional probability formula states that the probability of A given B equals probability of A and B over probability of B. So here they tell you the probability of Ahmed smoking and that it's 3 over 10. That's your first piece of given information. Next they give you the probability of him smoking and developing lung cancer, which is 4 over 15. And using this information, you can now go ahead and substitute your numbers into the formula. So here, 4 over 15 is the probability of A and B, and then 3 over 10 is the probability of B. All you need to do is divide 4 over 15 by 3 over 10. Using a calculator, divide 4 over 15 by 3 over 10. Your final answer will be 8 over 9. The question is asking which of the following distributions has a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of approximately 5. Option D and E is not required to be looked at. Our graph has to have a mean of 75, meaning it's either going to be option A, option B, or option C. Knowing that our mean is 75, we need to add 5 each time going to the right side as our standard deviation is 5. So here it's going to be 80, here it's going to be 85, and here it's going to be 90. So we end with 90, which is going to be option A. As you can see, the mean is 75 and it ends with 90. The expression 1 over x plus 1 over y over 1 over x squared minus 1 over y squared is equivalent to to simplify, first thing we're going to do is we're going to write them next to each other and put bracket. So 1 over x plus 1 over y divided by 1 over x squared minus 1 over y squared. For our first step, we're going to add the fraction with the unlike denominator. So 1 over x plus 1 over y. First thing we're going to do is we're going to multiply the denominator. So x times y is x times y. And to find the denominator, we're going to cross multiply. So 1 times y is equal to y and 1 times x is equal to x. So our denominator is y plus x. For the second one, we're going to do the same thing. So 1 over x squared minus 1 over y squared. First, we're going to multiply the denominator. So x squared times y squared. And then again, we'll do cross multiplication. 1 times y squared is equal to y squared. And x squared times negative 1 is negative x squared. We wrote here negative 1 because here is negative. So our denominator is y squared minus x squared. To convert from division to multiplication, we're going to keep and change and change. Here we're going to flip. So we'll have y plus x over x times y times x squared times y squared over y squared minus x squared. And now to complete our simplification, we're going to factor the expression. This expression is already factored. So y plus x over x times y times, to factor the denominator, it's going to be x times y and x times y and for the denominator it's going to be y minus x and y plus x
and now we're going to cancel the common factors so y plus x and y plus x and x times y and x times y so our final simplification is x times y over y minus x this is our final answer all students at a private middle school are required to sign up for one of these three clubs, chess, drama, or math. The graph below shows the distribution of participation by grade level. Which of the following statements is incorrect? So it's asking for the incorrect option. Let's go through all of the options together and note which one's wrong. A. 30% of the 6th graders joined the math club. 30% of the 6th graders joined the math club. Option A is correct. The number of 8th graders who joined the chess club is the same as the number of 8th graders who joined the math club. Here it's asking for the 8th graders who joined chess club and 8th graders who joined the math club. At chess club we have 40% of students as well as math club we also have 40% of students from 8th graders. That means this is also correct. The number of 6th graders who joined the drama club is the same as the number of 7th graders who joined the drama club. Here, let's note that the number of 6th graders who joined the drama club is the same as the number of 7th graders who joined the drama club. So the percentage of the grade 6 students who joined the drama club is 50% as seen here as well as the grade 7 students is also 50%. But this is incorrect, as the number of grade 6 students could possibly be 100 students, and the number of grade 7 students could possibly be 150 students. For example, 50% of 100 is not equal to 50% of 150. That is exactly why this is incorrect. We do not know the number of 6th graders or the number of 7th graders. It is not included. If it were to ask the percentage of the 6th graders and the 7th graders, this could have been correct. But in this case, it is incorrect. Let f be the function f of x equals 1 plus 4 over x. What are all of the values of C that satisfy the mean value theorem of differential calculus on the closed interval? 1 over 2 and 8. So first, let us write the function, which is f of x equals to 1 plus 4 over x. And the interval, 1 over 2 and 8. 1 over 2 is A and 8 is B. And first, let us start with the equation of the mean value theorem, which is f prime of f of c equals to f of b minus f of a over b minus a. What do we mean by f prime f of c is the derivative of the main function, which is minus 4 over x squared equals to f of b. So now to find the value of f of b, we need to substitute 8, which is a b, instead of x. So, f of 8 equals to 1 plus 4 over 8, which will give us an answer of 1.5. And we do for f of a which is 1 over 2 equals to 1 plus 4 over 1 over 2 which will give us an answer of 9 so now negative 4 over x squared equals to 1.5 minus 9 over b minus a which is 8 minus 1 over 2 so now we need to calculate it then we substitute x by c 
so we'll get negative 4 over c squared equals to negative 1 so now we need to find the value of c we will use the calculator and we will get x1 equals to negative 2 and x2 equals to 2 and as we see in the interval c is greater than 1 over 2 but less than 8 so negative 2 is impossible and 2 is between half and 8 so only 2 will be the answer which is b let f be the function f of x equals 3x to the power of 3 what are all of the values of c that satisfy the mean value of theorem of differential calculus on the closed interval 1 and 3 so first let us write the function given which is f of x equals to 3x to the power of 3 and the interval given which is 1 and 3 1 is a and 3 is b and the equation for the mean value theorem is f prime of c equals to f of b minus f of a over b minus a what do you mean by f prime of f of c is the derivative of the main function which is 9x squared equals to now we need to find f of b we just substitute 3 which is b by x in the main function so f of 3 is equal to 3 in brackets 3 to the power of 3 which is equal to 81 then we do the same thing to find f of a so f in brackets 1 equals 3 in brackets 1 to the power of 3 which equals to 3 so now after we found f of b and f of a we just plot it in our equation so 9x squared equals to 81 minus 3 over b minus a which is 3 minus 1 so 9x squared would equal to 78 over 2 which is equal to 39 so 9x squared equals to 39 we swap x to c so 9c squared equals 39 for the final step we need to find the value of c we can do that by letting the equation equals to 0 so in this situation we will swap 39 to the other side so the sign will change so we'll end up with 9c squared minus 39 equals to 0 so now after that step we can use our calculator by pressing mode 5 3 so a will equal to the coefficient of c squared which is 9 and b will be the coefficient of c which we don't have in this situation so we we'll write it as zero and c will be negative 39 which is the coefficient which is what's left over and let's put them in our calculator and we'll get the answer now i will show you how to use it in the calculator so first we start with pressing mode then 5 then 3 here it will appear a b and c and as we said before a was equal to 9 and b was equal to 0 and c was equal to negative 39 now we press enter and we'll get the first answer which is x1 and the second answer which is x2 now after we got the answers from the calculator how do we know which 
answer is correct or both of them are correct we can do that by using the interval given which is 1 and 3 by that we know that c is greater than 1 but less than 3 so negative square root of 39 over 3 is impossible but square root of 39 over 3 is in between 1 and 3 so that's why it is the correct answer for what value of k will x plus k over x have a relative maximum at x equals negative 2 so let y equals y equals x plus k over x to find the relative maximum i'm going to use the first derivative test first i'm going to rewrite the second term in power form as you know 1 over x equals x to the negative 1 and k over x equals kx to the negative 1. Now I'm going to use the power rule to take the derivative of y, which is equals to y prime equals 1 minus kx to the negative 2. Now put y prime equals to 0. At a relative maximum, the first derivative equals to 0. Now we're going to write 1 minus k over x squared equals 0. Okay, so put x equals negative 2. 1 minus k over negative 2 to the power of 2 equals 0, which will give us let's write this here 1 minus k over 4 equals 0 and then 1 equals k over 4 now we need to multiply both sides by 4 so this will be cancelled 1 multiplied by 4 which is 4 so k is equals to 4 this is the final answer